Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my backyard and welcome back to my series I'm doing on building this big bandsaw mill. <laughs> if this is your first time here, there'll be a link in the description and up in the cards to a playlist that contains all the videos to get you caught up to where we are right now. In the last video, I painted the carriage as well as took care of a bunch of odds and ends. And today I'm gonna get started on the drive wheel, which is going to start with getting this shaft mounted in its bearings and mounted to the saw head beam. So down here is the drive side of the beam. I've already gone ahead and laid things out. I laid out the outside of the upright and then from there I found the center point of the drive wheel. So that would be the center point of the shaft as well. And then I have a mounting plate here, which is roughly 12 inches wide. So I'm going to have this on the beam like this and I want to support the back side of this. So I'll take this extra piece of beam stock and cut a section of it and weld it on over here to help support that mounting plate. So first we'll get the bearings mounted to the plate. So I have the shaft mounted into the bearings and I have the bearings pretty well aligned right now. These bearings are self-aligning so that the, so basically the bearing inside of the pillow block will be able to tilt in any direction to get them in a nice straight line or to line up perfectly with the shaft. What I'm gonna do is start transferring the holes. A really cool tip that someone left me on my idle shaft assembly video was if I use a smaller diameter center punch for the holes, like these ones, I don't have a center punch big enough for these. If I put it in the hole, I measure the offset, which in this case is a quarter inch. I offset the bearing or the thing I want to mount a quarter inch. I make my center mark, and then that center mark will actually be a quarter of an inch over in the right position. So that's actually a really cool tip. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get the front one mounted and then from that point, then I'll mark the back ones so I can keep the alignment going um, through all of them here. So the bolts I'm using to mount this are three quarter inch uh, fine threads, or fine thread, three quarter, whatever. So the pilot hole needs to be 11 sixteenths. some wood. All right, so this is too big for my tap handle, so I am going to use the drill press to hold this thing while I try and turn with a wrench. The drill press isn't actually grabbing the tap because it is too big for the jaws in the chuck, but it is the right size to fit like up into the little area where the jaws are. So I'll just keep applying some pressure down with the quill and turn this thing with a wrench till it is fairly well started. I need more torque. <laughs> this is crazy. Okay, I'm gonna go see if I can find something bigger. Oh. So I have the front bearing all mounted and now I'm gonna work on the rear bearing, getting that mounted. So here I'm gonna use my shim method thing again, where I'll just drop the center punch between these two shims which make up the gap. The shims are the same size, so the center point is still in the center. And I'll just kind of line it up centered front and back. Drilling time.
So I have my additional piece here ready to be welded on. I drilled some holes. These are just clearance holes for the bolts to come in uh, through the plate and it has somewhere to go down here. So I don't have to worry about cutting the bolts down to length. Originally, I was going to just weld the plate on top of here, drill this out and then continue the tapping down through there. But I figure that will probably drill in the hole for the tap is probably gonna end up screwing up the threads on the plate already. So I just drilled clearance holes. So now I need to make a few more clearance areas here for the center bearing and up front for the front bearing. And for those who are so close to the edge of here, I think I'm just gonna cut them out. It's my plasma cutter. <laughs> So even though the bearings have a little okay. bit of adjustability in their mounting holes, I'm still going to try and get this shaft to be as perpendicular to the beam as possible at this point, just to give me a little bit of a head start for later. Inch and a quarter. Inch and an eighth. Alright, I'm hesitating a bit because I want to make sure that I figured everything out before I end up welding this whole plate on here, but I think I should be good to go. So I've stripped everything off the beam so it makes it a lot easier for me to rotate this thing so I can get at all the welds really easily. That way all the welds are in the flat position, making them really easy to get welded. And I can also do the plug welds now that the bearings are removed.
So now this thing is ready to go back onto the carriage, uh, but I'm not gonna try to move it just yet because it is crazy hot right now and I have to be able to grab this end. So in the meantime, I'm going to do a little degreasing on the underside of the beam. I have a lot of cutting fluid there from my drilled and tapped all the holes for linear bearing rails that I need to clean off. And that's gonna be a lot easier to get all that stuff cleaned off while this is um, upside down. So now this thing is ready to get back onto the carriage. So I'm going to try and uh, get this thing back over there. I'm gonna go in the same way that I came out. I'm gonna try and bring the beam across the track over towards the shed and then slide it in between the legs. That's really the only place where I have enough clearance space since this is 12 feet long. And now this probably weighs around 200 something pounds with the most of the weight down here. So we'll see how this goes. While I have the beam upside down, I'm also going to weld on the blocks for the adjuster bolts. I probably won't be using these too much for adjustments since I did do a pretty decent job of getting it lined up from the get-go and I'm really just planning to use the idle wheel to do all the adjustments on to match the drive wheel. But these adjuster bolts will also help to support the pillow blocks to keep them from moving as low is applied to the shaft when the tension is applied to the blade. So you may recall that when I took these bearings off the first time, the balls fell out. So I'm gonna reload these with some more of these ball bearings that I caught and that I actually grabbed from another carriage. I cleaned them off and I'm gonna put them back into the races here. So these bearings are actually really cool. They're in a line here and they basically just flow around in a circle and there's two uh, areas on both of these things. So there's four total bearing races. It's all loaded back up. I'm gonna put my little retainer block thing in here and hopefully I can get that in there without knocking any of the balls out. Sweet. So yesterday I ran out of daylight, so I'm gonna continue putting everything onto the beam and then we'll get this thing back up onto the linear rails. I'm just gonna attach the front and back bearing to the mounting plate for now. Later I'm gonna to have to do some shimming on these to make sure that the wheels are aligned. So I'm not too worried about the center bearing right now. And when I shim the bearings, that will also give me the opportunity to make sure that all three of the bearings are in the same plane in case the mounting plate isn't flat or the bearings happen to be different sizes.
So I think this is gonna do it for this one. Uh, next time, I'm gonna work on getting the motor on here, or at least the mount for it up onto the beam, and then we'll be moving on from there. It's really starting to come together. I am super, super excited about this. <laughs> so thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on the sawmill or anything back in my shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, it's still woodworking. <laughs> happy woodworking. Ah, that's just awesome.